Is that my cue, Bella? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Introducing our new musician, Bella Meyer, everybody. A rousing St. Andrew's welcome. That was her first prelude. Wasn't it great? Miss Bella, would you come up just a minute over here with me? On behalf of all of us at St. Andrew's, we want to say welcome. We want you to go ahead and make some mistakes early and get them out of the way. She's nervous. A butler, third-year student, major in piano performance. And as we heard last week, it's not a performance, and we are full of grace and love, right? So as long as we get through a hymn, we'll be fine. Uh, Bella is from the Vincennes area and came up today with her mother, Susan. So we welcome you guys to us, your first day. Here's some flowers. Yeah. And you're going to sing your solo now? No. No, okay. <laughs> God, here, let me have a prayer with you. Come over here just for a minute. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Bella in our midst, and we pray for her, for an anointing on her music, for her a passion for love, for people, and for being with us here at St. Andrews. Thank you for calling her to be with us. We ask a blessing on her ministry, and as she returns back to school, a blessing on her schooling. We pray it all for her mother and family as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. See how, see how quickly she said no to the solo? She's, she knows me already. Listen, I want to say good morning to everybody and Happy New Year. Happy New You in Christ. We'll talk about it in a minute. It's up on the sign today if you want to get a picture on your way out. And I am welcome you all to church today. Um, I talked with Pat Toomey last night. And Pat would like me to share with you she was hospitalized one night over, overnight this past week for some observations. She's resting at home and she sends her love. So continue to keep Pat Toomey in your prayers, if you would. Uh, last week, I missed announcing Dennis Wall's birthday until later in the service. But Dennis had a birthday last week. And then he also just got out of the hospital and is resting at home as well, Dennis Wall. So he and Crystal, um, uh, we continue to keep them in our prayers as well. And alongside uh, Pat Charlesworth uh, at Brownsburg Healthcare, John reports that she's doing pretty well this week. Uh, Pat is all excited about the clothing closet. We've been, haven't had a uh, morning to be open until this Saturday. So our first clothing closet will be Saturday, 10 to 12, and volunteers to help are always welcomed and invited to come. Uh, perhaps you're somebody who made a New Year's resolution that said, I'm going to get into God's Word a little further, Pastor Doug. You're welcome to stay after church today for the adult Bible study in the library. They're studying the greatest story, session two, about Jesus. And then tonight on Faith Formation at 7, it's a Zoom event. You can join us tonight at 7 on Zoom at Faith Formation. We'll look at the Advent devotional last week, and then we'll get ready for studying Psalms starting next week in Faith Formation. And the Wednesday Bible study always uh, is a, an invitation to you to join us Wednesday night, also on Zoom, uh, as we study the lessons for the coming Sunday uh, as a great way to prepare for Sunday's morning's worship. I wanted to also say that uh, another birthday is in the house, Mark Holman. Mark's been gracious and, and a gift to worship and music and to help Bella uh, get up and running. And so, Mark, happy birthday Saturday. Hope you have a good weekend with your family. And then we want to introduce uh, Madam President Jan Smith. Uh, please uh, stay seated, I think. Be okay, right, Jan? <laughs> good morning. Um, so I'm sure you've all heard by now that on January 28th, we have our an annual congregational meeting. And I really can't stress enough the importance of you, of you being here for that meeting because we have some very important matters to talk about. And we also need to uh, vote on our budget for this year. After the annual meeting concludes, we are gonna have a special meeting, which won't be long unless there's a lot of questions, but we have to take a vote in order to move forward. We had our last task force meeting in December and at that time, uh, we were presented, and this is through guidance from the, the Synod, that at this point, we need to vote whether we're going to stay here or we're going to sell the building. So there will be two questions, and you will get a letter in the mail with these on there, so that you, because I ask that you pray about them before the time for the vote. 
And the questions will be, number one, is it best for our mission and ministry to stay here in this building and continue to do what we are doing? Or is it best in our mission for our mission and ministry to sell this building and explore other options? So until we can make those decisions, the task force can't move forward to do anything else because there's kind of no po point in using our energy to go one way or the other only to find we're going to go the other direction. So um, we will be voting. When we do vote, it'll be by paper ballot, so that is why you need to be here in person. Uh, we will feed you, I promise. Um, and we'll need, because we'll need two-thirds of a majority uh, by paper ballot to, for, for the one direction or the other to move forward. And um, so anyway, and, until then, you know, until uh, the time for the meeting, I want you to just remember some words from um, Isaiah that says, um, you, Lord, give true peace to those who depend on you because they trust you. So uh, let's trust the Lord as you pray over the questions so that we can make the right decision for St. Andrews. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. As you know, everybody, the Lord is with us, and four of your seven council members are here this morning. So feel free to reach out and discuss the issues and uh, pray together on, on how God is leading us going forward. Thank you for making the time change uh, today. You're welcome to stay until 11 to see who didn't uh, make the time change. If you're unfamiliar or forgot, it's every four months. We switch between 9 and 11 with our friends from faith. And always, I tell you, that if the 11 o'clock fits your schedule better, you're always welcome out at faith uh, for their service. And I'll say the same to them if they prefer an early service. Let's take a moment just to have a deep breath and feel the Spirit's presence before we begin. Please stand as you're able for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Another moment of silence. God, our rock and our refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant. Renew your creation. Restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The good news this morning, friends, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. And by the authority of Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Baptized in water is our gathering song. Four, five, six, if you're using the hymnal.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God, creator of light and the giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters, immerse us in your grace, transform us by your spirit, that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the first chapter of Genesis, beginning with the first verse. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 29 responsively. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. 
the glory, the God of glory thunders, the Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The second reading is from the 19th chapter of Acts, beginning with the first verse. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what, then, were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, it's the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark in the first chapter. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all over Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. And he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I will baptize you with water, but he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And in those days, Jesus from Nazareth, in the era, Nazareth of Galilee was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice from heaven came and said, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise amen you, and amen. You may be seated. Oh, look, you already are. <laughs> I want to say uh, good morning to children. I see some. At least we all did, didn't we, earlier? <laughs> come on, Denise. Uh, Miss, Mr. Lee heard your voice. He wanted to come up and see what was going on. Come on up, Miss Emma. How are you, honey? Come over here. Let's stand over by this thing. For a moment. We'll stand here, uh, sort of. We'll stand over here so there's not a glare off Pastor Doug's head shining out. Say good morning to everybody, Miss Emma. Good morning. good morning. We say good morning. Also, see that camera right there and the black camera? We have to look at that. Say good morning to our Facebook family. Good morning to our Facebook family. And wave. <laughs> and we thank Amanda for operating that today, don't we? Yeah. yeah. You might sit up there sometime and help her out. She needs a little help sometimes. Who do you have with you today? Tiggy. What is his name? Tiggy. Tiggy? Yeah, he's beautiful. I like him. Was he a Christmas gift? No? When I was little. Oh, when you were little. Okay, yeah. Well, very good. Well, I love him. I'm glad Tiggy could come up with us. 
So today is a big day in the church. It's called baptism of our Lord. That's a big word. Can you say it? Baptism of our Lord. It's like a, it's like a bath. It's like a cleaning. And we do it at church. You had a baptism done. And baby Lee's had a baptism. And mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, everybody. And so this is where we do it. It's called the font. It's a big word, isn't it? Font. Do you know what it means? No, it's, what it means is it's the place where baptisms are done. So the naming committee really had to work hard. What do we call this? Let's go with font. So anyway, right now there's no water in there, is there? Nothing there, just a font. So when we put a little bit of water in, okay, I'm going to do this. Put a little bit of water in there. Then you want to step down with me a little closer? And we're going to say a prayer over the, over the water. Hold your hands up like that. Say, dear God, we ask your blessing on this water in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let it be a blessing to all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. So now God's blessed the water. And now it's like what we might think about like holy water. So when you come up for communion today or anybody else, what we can do is put our finger in there. Go ahead, you can put your hand in there. Isn't that cool? And then do a little, it's cold, yes it is. And then do a little sign of the cross on your forehead like that. A little sign of the cross, that's right. That's how we remember our baptism. And now when we remember it, we're like a new person. And Tiggy should get baptized too, shouldn't he? Right? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There you go, Tiggy's baptized too. And we thank you, God, for the gift of baptism and new life. Right? And then what I thought, Miss Emma, is why, after church, you join me at the door and let's hand out these crosses to all of our friends at church today. Do you want to help me do that? Okay, you can take those and we'll do it after church. Thanks for coming up, hon. Big day here today, everybody. Good morning again. Happy New Year. Um, This story came across my email, so I'll I'll try it for the first little joke of the new year. As you remember, uh, just to kind of get you connected to me and speaking, you don't listen to one big head throughout your week, so start with an opening funny about a couple, and they had been married a long time, but like in some relationships and marriages, the husband didn't get along with his mother-in-law very well. The husband and the mother-in-law didn't get along very well, had a contentious relationship. So one year they decided they're going to go on a trip to Jerusalem and let's invite the mother-in-law to come with us so maybe there can be some bonding in the relationship between the husband and the mother-in-law. So the three of them set off for Jerusalem they had a wonderful time there, but lo and behold, toward the middle of the trip, she, she passed away of a sudden illness and died there in Jerusalem. So the couple went to see the funeral home and make arrangements, and the funeral home director said, well, if you want, we can bury her here in Jerusalem for $500, or we can ship her back with you guys to the States for $20,000. And the guy didn't hesitate. He said, oh, well, we'll pay the $20,000. Let's ship her back Because I have been here in Jerusalem all week. I heard about this guy that was buried here and rose again. And I can't take that chance by burying her here in Jerusalem. (laughs) I can't take that chance. Well, friends, we got a, a, a day before us today. And I'm sure over the times of the holidays, you had many occasions to watch a little bit of TV or to relax, I hope, for all of you. Uh, on one of my channels, I found the cartoon, The Jetsons, The Jetsons, that space age family. It is one of my favorite cartoons, I, I have to say. And I think in those cartoons, uh, George had one of the first Zoom meetings, is what I heard about the Jetsons cartoon. But anyway, in this particular episode, he has a replay gun. George Jetson in this cartoon has a replay gun, and when anything doesn't go like he wants it to go, He shoots the gun at it and replays it again and has a a free do-over, if you will. And I thought, what a great idea for all of us that we might like to have a replay gun if we could. And maybe we're only a week into the new year. Perhaps you'd like to have a replay gun already this year. Perhaps like me, maybe you set resolutions and made some plans and they didn't quite come together. Maybe you had some things you wanted to change and they didn't get changed. Maybe some same old sin has followed you into the new year. Excuse me a minute there. So I want to say today that uh, 
happy new you in Christ. That in Jesus, we are a new creation, says our Bible. And God's replay gun is our baptism when we remember that we've been washed and cleansed in God's grace and God's love. Baptism in our new year reminds us that God has given us a do-over, a fresh start, a new beginning. It is our baptism of our Lord Sunday today. It's the baptism of our Lord Sunday introducing us and bringing us into the epiphany season. The epiphany season is the ministry, the manifestation of Christ. We'll have a couple of weeks of that. Then on February 11th, it's the transfiguration of our Lord. The only second time we hear God speak, we hear God speak today in the baptism. We hear it at the transfiguration as Jesus now goes and moves through his life onto his death in the season of Lent. Easter comes early this year, my friends, March 31st. And Ash Wednesday is Valentine's Day, the 14th of February. But talking about baptism today, I want to lift it up to us. It's one of our two sacraments in the Lutheran Church. Martin Luther believed in it because Jesus said to do it. Jesus said, go and baptize and make disciples of all nations. So we are then invited to go and to baptize to go and wash people with the cleansing that God provides in a new start, a fresh beginning, a do-over, a replay in the love and grace that only comes from God. It is the great commission at the end of the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus says, go and baptize and make disciples. That's something I want to look at for the Lenten journey together. Maybe we'll talk about what it's like to make disciples during our Lenten journey and study the power surge material where the consonants of that word lift up the marks of a disciple, like in the word power, to pray, worship, read the Bible, power, and I know you've heard this before, I think, and then surge, to serve and to relate and to give, the marks of a disciple. That's what Jesus wants of us in this new life, in this new year, and baptism is our gift from God, our washing, our cleansing, our renewal, and we're invited to remember that as we go through daily life. And so when you and I fail, when you and I fall, when you and I forget, we come back to the waters of grace, like Niagara Falls, some 200,000 tons of water, six stories high, washing over us, and we step out and try again. We do not give up, and we do not give in to sin. It's unfortunate, in my opinion, that the church, the Christian church, has messed up baptism. We've kind of messed it up in our church. One church says a baptism is good. Another says it's not. A woman joined my church in Crawfordsville. She said, do I have to be baptized again? I have been baptized four different times in four different churches because each pastor said, the previous baptism wasn't good enough. What are we doing out there in the world? Jesus didn't say, do it this way or do it that way. He just said, do it. And so the amount of water or where it's done or how it's done are not the things that Jesus got involved in. And maybe neither should we as a church. It's God's divine confirmation. Jesus is baptized today in the River Jordan and so we celebrate that on our baptism of our Lord Sunday. Isn't it interesting, friends? Why is that today? Why not have baptism of our Lord in the summer or something? Well, it's following the, yesterday was the day of Epiphany, the 12 days of Christmas conclude. And now we're beginning the Epiphany season, beginning the new year. So it fits right here on January 7th, the first Sunday or second Sunday of the year, to have a new year celebration of the baptism of our Lord Sunday. In verse 9, the Jesus is baptized by John in the River Jordan, but something really struck me in verse 10 today in our passage. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he sees the heavens open, the skies bright, let's say, and then the Spirit descends upon him. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water in verse 10, same thing for you and I. Just as we come up out of the water, we die to the old, friends, and we rise to the new. We die to the old and rise to the new, like Romans 6 says, buried with Jesus through baptism into his death, 
So just as Jesus was raised from the dead, so we too might live a new life. It's new life in Christ, new life for us today. It's not about how much water or the location. It's about the dying to the old and rising to the new. It's about a replay. It's about a new life. It's about today being the first day of your new year. It's about today being the first day of your new year. Jesus today gets divine approval, if you will. He gets divine, let's say, affirmation or love. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, the Spirit descends and a voice comes from heaven. Again, the first of two, only two times we hear from God recorded in scriptures saying, you are my son. You are my son to Jesus. You are my son, claiming Christ, the beloved, the beloved, the one that I love. And with you, I am well pleased. With you, I am well pleased. You are my son. I love you and I am well pleased with you. I like how this comes out in the, in the message, the more contemporary version of the Bible. What God says, according to the message, you are my son, Chosen and marked by my love. Pride of my life. From the Bible called The Message, a more contemporary version uh, saying, this is how it translates what God says. You are my son, chosen and marked by my love, and you are the pride of my life. You are the pride of my life. God said to you, and God said to me when we were baptized, you are my son, you are my daughter. You are my son. You are my daughter. Chosen and marked with the sign of the cross by my love. And you are the pride of my life. Ah, is that great? What a great start to the new year. You need a replay today. Replay and get rid of the sin. Let it go. Let go of what you couldn't do this week in the new year resolution. Remember baptism in daily life. Walk wet, Luther talked about. Walk wet. Say to yourself, but I'm baptized. But I'm baptized. Do the sign of the cross and start again. A free replay, if you will. But I'm baptized. We die to the old, my friends, and we rise to the new. And we see, and we see the light of epiphany. We see the light of epiphany. And we see God's love. Amen. Amen and amen. Oh, sing to God above. And that's also the title of the hymn. <laughs> uh, five, five, five. If you're using your hymnal, please stand as you're able. Let's sing.
friends, today is a festival Sunday in the church, and we say together the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Inspire wisdom and a spirit of proclamation in your church, God of forgiveness. Uplift leaders to share the truth of your word in the community. Encourage us to live into the promise of baptism, working for justice and peace in all the world. God of grace. Receive our prayer. Renew your creation, God of thunder and mighty waters. Restore the rivers in which your children are baptized. May fields flourish and grow. So in the stewards and caretakers of the land to cherish your good works. God of grace. Receive our prayer. Give strength to your leaders. God who is present in every country and community. Raise up leaders committed to equity and healing. Grant them discernment and compassion as they lead in love. God of grace. Receive our prayer. Protect and cherish the most vulnerable among us, God of strength. Accompany those separated from family or hurting from broken relationships. Shelter our unhoused neighbors and any experiencing poverty. Protect those incarcerated in prisons and detention centers. Care for the sick and suffering, and especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Trusting the assurance of the Holy Spirit remember all who have died and rest in God's care. Give hope to those who grieve, even as we rest in your eternal promise of resurrection. God of grace. Receive our prayer. Encourage this congregation, God who calls and sends disciples, guide us to accompanying, learning from, and serving our neighbors in the margins. Knowing that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the peace of Christ be with you always. Please turn and share that peace one with another as you feel led.
Were you able to get to each other? We could take some more time. Uh, everybody? Okay, all right, good. Thank you for your gifts of offering. If you have something today, there's a, always a plate by the door. Thank you for the online giving that we all do. I think uh, God uses that to bless our ministry here. Please stand as you're able. Let's sing the offertory. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all the good things come from you. In bread and cup, you opened heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son. Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it's our duty and it is our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all the nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, do this also to remember me. It is in remembering our Lord that we pray together that prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see. You may be seated. During Holy Communion today, I've invited Bella and her mother uh, and Mark to join us at the front of the line as we begin.
Congregation, stand as you're able, please. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, just before the final blessing, just a reminder, there's a group meeting for adult Bible study in the library. All are welcomed. I put coffee on in the kitchen and forgot to mention that earlier or... I was going to get Susan a cup, so Susan, I know you wanted coffee all during the service, so now you can get some in fellowship with uh, each other. Please come up and greet uh, Bella today, too, as well. And may you go in, in the peace of God, the God who names you, the Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. The sending song, when long before time... It's 861 in your hymnal, and it has six stanzas, 861. Depending on the time, I may need to slide out the side door. God's beloved. God, 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 we share the love of Jesus.
and walk with our community. Thanks be to God.